how can I continue to do video game boost films and movies and OVAs and not talk about this one? Well, it's a couple of reasons. For me, it's, it feels like it's mostly like in the back of my mind. It's that movie you swear you don't remember much of, and I didn't until I saw the movie again and for my review of it. It's always in the back of your mind thinking like, until you remember, when did I see Super Mario Bros. 3 for the first time ever? Oh, The Wizard, 1989 flick. <laughs> see, it's been over two decades since this movie came out. What you're seeing here, this screenshot, which most people... Uh, I, I, I wanted to pull up the, the box art and everything. I'm like, uh, let me do something different and pull up how the movie begins with that title. <laughs> I'm like, huh, a very different contrast. Ooh, this movie is very much a product of its time, but as far as video game movies go, is it really bad as Rotten Tomatoes says it is, which is a, at a 32% rating currently? Short answer? Yes. Long answer. Well, that's where my review comes in. Because uh, this right here for me was the very first video game boost movie, and the general consensus is from people that it's a 100-minute a hundred minute long advertisement for Nintendo games and products. If you grew up with this movie, you had to see it. Like, stuff like this we all ate up as kids back in the day, even no matter how bad or questionable the content was. Like, your Mario Brothers Kart Super Show, your Legend of Zelda every Friday, your Captain N, which, whew, that, 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 when I think, when I say questionable, I, I'm in my head, I'm like, yeah, that, but yeah, if you grew up with this, you were desperate to see it, you know, this was, this was our passion, our trials and tribulations of all 80s kids to, to, to see what we loved most as kids be glorified on, on the big screen. We had to sit through Fred Savage style 80s hijinkery. <laughs> I looked all of his movies up real quick to see if IMDb and or on Wikipedia or something like that. Wikipedia is really helpful out in some of the review, some of the stuff I couldn't figure out in my own writing this review down. This was the same year Little Monsters came out, which was another product of his time and a horrendously mean spirited dog sh pile, shit pile of a movie. Ugh. Just recalling some of that movie. Ugh. But we're calling some of this movie. I figure this one will be slightly less mood spirited. But anyway, it starts as you see here. This is, um, I don't know if you can make it out, that little blob there in the background, but that's a little kid just walking down the road all by himself till the cops show up to, to take him in. The kid's destination is California, which, again, if you're familiar with that, might be some kind of drinking game every time that comes up. Although, watching a movie later on, like, hmm. Maybe it doesn't come up as much as I thought it was to warrant a drinking game. So it probably is, like, if you see a... Um, maybe there is a drinking... That's what I'm thinking. Like, if anyone mentions California, drink. If anyone mentions uh, that he's a wizard or what's the... You know, the title of the movie, drink. Nintendo, you know, screen shows up with any, like, thing Nintendo drink. I imagine that once the end of the movie shows up. Ooh. But yeah, he's... Kid's going, trying to get to California, which I, uh... That's all this kid Jimmy says for the most of the movie. There's talks with, um, him and a... What I thought were caretakers of this, um, like, kindergarten or, like, daycare or something like that they put him in, where he's, like, building... He's, like, taking blo blocks and, like, stacking them up or something like that. That's, he's kind of sitting by himself. They're back and forth mentioning, um... You know, he's done this a couple times. He keeps running off. He just takes his lunchbox and goes. I later found out this this one guy who's talking and complaining about all this is like his stepfather or something like that, which I found out like later on in the movie. There's a lot of, uh, this movie's got a lot of uh, weird, weird pissing. You're just one after the other. It's like, oh, we ain't got time for that. We got to get to the next portion of the plot and get to, got to shill more Nintendo products <laughs> and games. We then cut to... Fred Savage, uh, a.k.a. Corey, who's Jimmy's half-brother, he's upset about the... Uh, word travels fast, apparently. This whole... Taking his lunchbox and walking around the place flushes some of the people he's staying with. Um, they want to seek other means and want to put Jimmy in a juvenile mental institute. Like, they're going to put him at home. This upsets Corey. Um, who's having an argument with his older brother, played by Christian Slater, and his dad, played by Bo Bridges. 
they all argue, and Corey, all by himself with no adults anywhere around, just goes up and visits Jimmy and sneaks out with him inside of a hostess cook slash Wonder Bread delivery truck. And once again, world travels fast because the people who want to put Jimmy in a home, uh, that, um, yeah, this prick stepdad that just seems to want to be rid of the guy, to be honest. He and the boy's mother hire our villain for the movie, a bounty hunter who specializes in children. That's not sketchy as fuck at all! <laughs> Where'd you go to pick him up? His name is Mr. Putnam, who we get confirmation of his villainy right away as Bo Bridges, you know, like, he's frustrated at what you call it, uh, at his, like, dad something or be, being so nonchalant about the whole thing, just want to get rid of him. Like, they want to get Jimmy back, and the, they're not worried about Corey. They say, like, well, Corey just wants to run away, you know? It's, it's, so he's kind of blaming the other kid. So, yeah, total prick. And Christian Slater even says pretty much, it's like, you know, I always thought you were an asshole, but until now, I just thought it was guilt by association. And so, like, they go, and so, like, he wants to go with uh, Bo Bridges to find Jimmy themselves. They're back and forth, but they eventually do, um, I guess he's got to, I guess he goes with him anyway, because maybe he just wears him down or something like that, it doesn't matter, but, uh, yeah. Again, weird pissing. If it sounds like I'm go rambling and going all over the place, the movie kind of does a fair shake of just like, da -da 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 -da, like I said. But yeah, putting him, confirmation of his villainy, just, um, as he sees Bo's Bridges go, uh, go into his little pickup truck, Putnam tells him, like, straight to his face, like, you know, I make a lot of money catching these kids. You, let's not have you getting in the way of that, all right? So for a while, uh, Jimmy and Corey roughing it out in the canyons. Then they get to a town where Corey can buy two bus tickets to California. But he's only got, like, so much money. It only gets you, like, very far. It only gets him, like, um, a stop along the way. Before that, though, he leaves, uh, he sees an arcade machine and leaves Jimmy to it. Um, so 16 minutes into this movie, we finally get our first shot of Nintendo. Jimmy tearing up on du uh, Double Dragon Arcade Machine, even though it's the NES version. Maybe it's one of those Play Choice 10 things or something like that. And I just was running Double Dragon at the time. This area must have been in a fucking time paradox. Because somehow in less than a minute we get the, you got 50,000 and Double Dragon? Uh, then he hides because he sees a cop looking around the place and is like, oh no. And then, uh, during all this time, looking, like, th through a newspaper, like, up and down, like, hmm, like that, new like, that whole shot of newspaper, it's just, like, hmm, pull down the newspaper, you see a person's face and then back up. Um, this is our heroine, Haley, the big driving force of the movie, and quite honestly, I always found her charming in, when I was a kid, she's still kind of charming now. Like, I thought I would, like, hate the kid characters for being too, like, obnoxious, but no, it's... I guess in comparison to mostly adult characters who are assholes, <laughs> or just incompetent, we'll see that later. <laughs> More on that later. But yeah, she finds them. Haley doesn't think too much of Jimmy, but Corey mentions his earlier Time Lord prowess in Double Dragon getting 50000 in a matter of less than a minute. Uh, bets her bus ticket, uh, they could beat her at her score in Double Dragon. I know she gets like 25200 by Mission 3. Uh, before she game overs, taking those like nasty jumps over that bridge. Like if you fall into the water, it's instant death. A lot of nasty instant death there. Uh, and then the next shot is Jimmy already at 28k and just keeps playing. So it's just so already big suspension of disbelief for this flick. Like I even going back, I did some research. I watched a I watched a no death run from Shadow Surge on YouTube. He got 47,000 on Double Dragon before the game's end. And that was a 20 minute video, like from start to finish, a no death run. Just. So. I'm sure it's possible to get 50,000, but again, the only way I think it's feasibly possible before Mission 3 is to do that little trick where you, like, go on the, the fence. You walk on the end of the fence, you. You don't jump off it, you fall down, and as you get up, like, you spawn the enemies, and as soon as you see them, uh, walk back, and then find, like, a, like, a certain spot where you can just keep punching and get, like, easy experience. I'm sure you can get 50,000 that way. But yeah, needless to say, he wins, he wins the bet, but, um, apparently the outside world of this building doesn't operate on the whole Time Lord static, because the bus office has already arrived and left. But yeah, now, with no bus, they're kind of stuck together, they move to the next thing, they just kind of, she just kind of tags along, I guess. 
Haley noticing later that the, 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 the further scene in a restaurant that somehow has like a weird side panel that has a game of Ninja Gaiden going on. And another um, inconsistency. She's like, he's on the second loop and he hasn't taken a hit left when there you can see like two little pips of his of his health bar. I bet he can still do better Ninja than me and Ninja Gaiden. I'm just saying, but st- again, another inconsistency. So she gets the idea. Hmm. You can beat me in Double Dragon. You might beat any, quote, video head. That's what she said. <laughs> she finds an ad somewhere for this video game competition for 50k for the winner and uh, thinks Jimmy could win the whole thing. And they'll split the money. Uh, Putnam arrives asking for the kids. They've already split, of course. He notices the dad and Slater's truck have pulled in as well. Melee ensues, but Putnam drives away. Like, he, um... It's encore melee. It's not like, cause he he slashes his tire, so he could like, he's, he wants he wants to get the money so ba- that badly. So Haley's got some money together just so far. I guess she sold her ticket or something like that maybe. Uh, mentioning her dad's a trucker, so they're hitching alongside, but makes the mistake of openly counting money all around uh, strange hillbilly folk. So they stop the. They stop the truck, they grab the hundred or something dollars from him, and the kids are left out on the road. Our third shot of NES goodness comes in Mario Brothers 2 as Slater and the dad go get their car fixed with new tires off in a small area. Like Slater has somehow, um, you know, Bo says, I thought that was broken, and I fixed it. He's, and Slater says, I fixed it. And he just, like, without asking, he just hooks up a, a, his NES in the back of the this TV. They just messing around, so we get a quick shot of that. The kids do make back some of their money by hustling some older businessmen out of theirs in another gaming bet. Somehow this movie puts bikers over truckers, because back on the road they go as they're trying to get to uh, Reno. I guess that's where they'll, they'll, well, more on that later. That's where they'll make like their big score or something like that. Next game appearance is actually not an NES game. It's an arcade game, and it received a, um... A PC Engine port of F1 Dream that it gets more money off of. This time for some olderish looking kids that um, you didn't tell us this guy was some kind of like freak wizard or something like that. I forgot that's the first time it comes up. Like when he's doing the when Haley sees Lucas doing the oh, wait, not Lucas, uh, Jimmy. Sorry, uh, a lot of a lot of five letter names in this movie. That's gonna throw the fuck throw me the fuck completely off. But yeah, he's a wizard. You're a wizard, Jimmy. But anyway, these kids are gonna... These kids wanna, I guess, beat them up and get their money back that way. It's like, you didn't mention this guy was a, a genius or something like that. Some kind of whiz kid or whatever. And they get chased off by the store owner. And some other other kid after that says, um... Sees that going and mentions, He's good, but he'll never beat Lucas. Who we see knows all 97 NES games. Big suspicion of disbelief there. In 1989, only 97 Nintendo games? 1989? NES was out, like, I think two years before that? Anyway, that's the whole big reveal of, like, the, I guess, your rival character, uh, Lucas, and we get the whole big, I love the power glove, it's so bad, and we get a shot of a Rad Racer, which I think works with that. Again, I never, I never owned a power glove, so I don't know. But the general consensus of that is, yeah, it didn't really work. Somehow this impresses Haley, and Corody tells him, you know, keep your power gloves off. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. But for the first time, Jimmy seems like intimidated. I was like, he, this is the first time he's probably the first time he's seen anybody be like that good at something, as good as he is. And maybe like, oh, they're like me. Maybe I. So he gets intimidated and runs off, and then Lucas also mentions Haley, like, hey, I'm entering this big tournament as well. Uh, Next thing is uh, Slater and the Dad. That's all I... I'm sure they have names. I don't remember them. I just know them. I just call them Slater and the Dad because it's easier to me to remember. Um, But they're staying in a hotel, bonding a bit, talking about California back when they were all one family. Uh, Jimmy and Jennifer... You mentioned the name Jennifer. Uh, Dad just wants to just wants to sleep and is having none of it. Slater, frustrated, gets out his NES from the back of a pickup truck and starts up a game of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A rough, tough game at the time. 
So he starts on that, and then in the morning, Dad is now playing, mentioning, I got the scroll weapon and almost beat Mecha Turtle at the end of level 3. That's actually accurate. Has he played much NES games before then? Because if this is like his first time playing and it took him like a couple of hours that night just to get to level 3, like, we could struggled with level 2 with the, the maze and the bombs and shit. That took us a couple tries, but fr- figure that out, one out. He almost got the end of level 3, though? Maybe that's where Jimmy gets his wizard, like, abilities from. Maybe his dad's, like, a super hardcore gamer back at, back in the day. And, you know, why don't we get more of that? Like, introduce the introduce the passion more! You know, how did he get into the... Like, what, did Jimmy always game like this beforehand? Did Jennifer game beforehand? We don't, we don't get any of that. That's like the... And that feels like the biggest crime in the movie of all. We don't get, like, a... A love of the... Like, if this was Nintendo, you would want to, like, probably promote that more. It brings families closer together. Because you're all getting to enjoy the same thing. Anyway, uh... Jimmy's outside. He's still crushed. Building things with empty popcorn boxes with... Which, uh... Upsets Corey thinking, you know, he's not getting any better mentally. Haley tries to help out saying, you know, like, Corey is... All he's... You're all he's got, Corey. And the guys, she notices a pickup truck coming, uh, barreling at them. It's like, oh shit, it's the guys from the arcade. We gotta go. But they chase them down. They get their, they do, uh, they rough up uh, Corey a little bit. They get their money back. And the uh, uh, Jimmy's still got that little uh, lunchbox, a briefcase. I don't know if I call it, said it was a briefcase. It's more like a lunchbox. But we get we get all that spilled out and we get more uh, confirmation on this Jennifer. It's, um... It's pictures of Jimmy and Jennifer, his twin sister, when he they were younger. Um, Corey just mentions one day they got too close to the river. Jennifer saved Jimmy from drowning, only to go herself. And that's when Jimmy and the rest of the family kind of fell apart. And Jimmy shut down with the... Um, TV tropes refer to it as Hollywood autism. That's got to be rough. Especially back in the 80s when we didn't know it was autism. Corey with no money now just wants to throw it away. And Jimmy says, Corey, I don't want to quit. So, hey, okay. Maybe he is getting better. It's like, oh, just that little bit is just like enough to bring the three of them back together. It's like, ah, oh, they were all about set to go their seven ways. And Jimmy pulls them back in. Ah, it's great. So, yeah, now we get the, okay, things might work out after all. On the other hand, things aren't working out for Dad Slater. Uh, he sees putting him in his car. And he's like, that son of a bitch. He's, he, he just goes full on. I'm going to ram this son of a bitch. <laughs> Dad does lose out in the end because his front gets smashed more than Putnam's rear. Putnam, which is like a, I guess like his uh, rear bumper or whatever, like dangling off. His front's like more mangled and busted up and his, t- his headlights are all. And Putnam's off again. So that's a 2 nothing now, Putnam Bow Bridges. <laughs> so confidence restored and Reno arrived. Haley finds a trucker she knows named uh, Spanky, played by Frank McRae who I recognize as the meat owner in Rocky II and Lieutenant Decker in Last Action Hero. Slater! <laughs> Spanky with Haley helps manage a $400 win on a craps table. This is uh, one of the few times the parents, uh, adults do get involved because it's like, you know, you can't bid. Like, no kids in the casino allowed, and especially if you're winning. <laughs> so, so yeah, they got thrown out, but not before they get their like $400 uh, get together. They get all that money together. Um, and then our next scene, um, Jimmy's tearing up all the classics while Haley's calling the Nintendo hotline, getting any information she can get on NES games there was, because I wonder how much probably did run more than $400 if you're just spending a lot of time on that one. What was that, like $3.99 a minute, $4.99 a minute, or something like that? You know, one of those toll, you know, back then, you know, this was before the internet, you know, you're... It was word of mouth strategy guides or just figure that shit out on your own and the expert and or just like. But that was like one of the ways to get like help. They, they were like actual like 1-800 numbers for tips online and had to get past a certain point in games. And while that's going on, Jimmy tears up all the classics on one of those Play Choice 10 arcade cabinets. Which if you don't know what those are, it was basically Nintendo's way of getting more people to want to buy their own console. Um... See, you put a quarter in usually to play a game and just go through it until game over. This, you put in quarters to have a limited time to play any game on the machine. 
So even if you game over, if you still had time, you kept playing. And if you wanted to keep playing, you had to keep putting money in. When time ran out, they would tell they would tell you, like, please insert additional money. Between the 800 number and $400? Even at 1989 money, that seems like another suspension of disbelief. <laughs> but he's going through them all, man. Mega Man 2, Ninja Turtles, Contra, Ninja Gaiden, etc. As Putnam sticks it to the dad and Slater the third time in a row by having their tuck, their new fixed truck towed as they stop and get Lucas, Lucas's hat back from the bully that took it from him. They're staying at a restaurant. They see, like, I recognize that hat. It's like one of the three bullies that accosted them earlier. They're about to do more than, more than just accost him. And, they, and Lucas is nearby sitting there. He's like, hey, I'll tell you where they're going. And, they, and he points out that they're going to L.A. for the video game championship. The pickup truck is, in the next scene, dismantled by the time they actually catch up to the tow truck. Putnam finds Corey. It's like, ah, Jimmy must be close by then. So he runs off. Corey, see this, warns Haley. Again, Corey's left just since Jimmy's the one he's really after. He's the one who's going to get money for that. Grabs Haley and with some quick thinking, uh, by the time they get to him, he thinks they're too late. We get the, ah, he touched my breast. And the second time, uh, adults actually get involved because the cop sees the smoking gum that is putting him with Jimmy in his grasp, like forcibly grabbing this, this kid. I was like, oh shit! He gets forcibly removed by police. Yeah, just not arrested or anything. Just, But anyway, it gives them enough time for the three kids to scramble. Um, they run to Haley's home, who she reveals, she actually lives in a trailer. Reveals in a back, back story with, uh, along with Corey. It reveals that uh, her mom had a a gambling problem, which is how she learned how the craps worked in this weird forced romance moment between Corey and Haley. Corey says, I think it's I think it's romantic. It's like the adventures of Link. Link wants to find Zelda. You want to find a house. Even though, once again, another uh, inconsistency, like the opening credits of Zelda, if you leave it go for long enough, st- that she's under a sleeping spell in the next game and you're there at the very beginning of the game with Link. Like, I don't know, how did they miss that? Like, that seems like an egregious fuck-up. Why does Nintendo let so much of this go? Like, looking back on this, they're gonna be like, hmm. But yeah, weird romance segment. It's like Zelda 2. I don't even think Ryan Gosling could have made that while I work. You know, before you think I'm faulting the actors. Nah, that's just, that's just a no-win scenario on that. In the next morning, put I guess Putnam manages to... Because he wasn't arrested, he's able, he's free to nab Jimmy again in the morning. And Haley, once again, with some quick thinking, putting him's car with Jimmy in, in, in the back seat, getting tailed by these, like, four big trucks, the trucker guys, one of whom is Spanky, who beats down Putnam on behalf of Haley, because he hears, like, oh, you... So, yeah, that was, so that was you that did that, huh? And so next thing, now they're all together again and make it to L.A., the video Armageddon. It's down to three finalists, Lucas Barton, a girl named Nora Grissom, and Jimmy Woods. That's the last name. Uh, they fight for 50 grand in a game that has never been played before in 15 minutes, which is just enough time for Putnam to arrive again and chase them down as the stepdad and wife arrive, as the Dan Slater. And now we get our Universal Studios tie-in as they're chased through this, I guess, a King Kong ride was going around at the time. They get chased and somehow, uh, like, they're openly chased, like, on the ride, and, like, none of the parents, like, seem like they want to get involved at all. But, yeah, they're chasing through, like, the actual, like, set. They're, like, off the off the rail, and, like, in the background, and, like, all the machinery and, like, sparks and all that stuff going on. Uh, they somehow find this, like, weird dumbwaiter-ish elevator that, like, gets Jimmy right onto one of the three consoles to play... Th- like, just in the nick of time, it's like, oh, like, hey, we're missing our third guy. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? This, this weird hammy host is like, like, boys, girls, children, animals. But yeah, the the door, the door there's like this big doorway that opens up and like Jimmy's sitting there like on one of the three console, the three like console stage areas that they'll be playing the, the first ever American appearance of an NES staple, Super Mario Brothers 3. And this whole contest is uh, inconsistent bullshit, too. Uh, it seems like they judge by distance, not points tallied, but they kind of do. Like, the big the big um, 
plot hole in the movie where Jimmy Jimmy stumbles in the beginning, but gets, gets that uh that warp whistle and the found in the mini fortress and skips to level four and somehow is like tearing through, and that goes on for maybe like shorter than I remember as a kid. But yeah, Jimmy wins. Um, movie's not quite over yet. Jimmy and the stepdad's car driving home see a tourist area where by you guessed it, California. It's the old um. You know the dino. You ever see Pee Wee's Big Adventure? The dinosaur area. Apparently, that was a big tourist attraction. I don't know if that exists still anymore. The old Cabazon dinosaurs. That's uh. Jimmy remembers a photo the whole family took there. Uh, he leaves the lunchbox of photos of photos he has right there, uh, inside the area, the climb in or wherever that is. Corey surmises, okay, I guess he just wanted to say goodbye. So yeah, and um, they all get to talking. I guess the. The mother and the father, to, I guess, to like reconcile things, maybe. So, and yeah, movie over. Uh, so, yeah. First ever video game movie, at least the first one I've seen. Maybe there's one for like the 70s that were more loosely based or something like that, as far as I know. But this was the, for me, this was the first ever. For a lot of you, it was kids, this was as well. Not a great movie. You could have easily swapped out the Nintendo stuff and Jimmy be good at something else like chess or whatever without a lot le- less inconsistencies is what i'm saying people said this movie was just a very long advertisement for nintendo and universal studios like i said i forgot this movie existed outside of being the first showcase of mario brothers 3 a game that aged well and also the power glove which did not to uh paraphrase Breno floss's song on mario brothers 3 I first saw the game in a film I won't name, a movie on which I blame my expectations on the power glove. It's so bad. He was serious. Looking back on it, again, I ate that stuff up as a kid. Looking back on it now, it's... I mean, I could see why I ate it up as a kid, because it showed me, like, games I, you know... I, I wasn't one of the... I wasn't, like, super rich or anything like that, because I couldn't afford, like, a lot of these games I was seeing for the first time, too. I'm like, oh, there's a Mega Man 2, and I'm actually seeing of it. The only thing, the only things I had to go in for, like, new games were, like, uh, back then, your Game Players magazine, which is what I had. Um, I know there others existed, like, Game Pro magazine, and that was a big one. Uh, nowadays, I get to look on Wikipedia and find out how F1 Dream was not, never a Nintendo game. It somehow shows up twice in the movie, like once on the pl- like what like uh once when Jimmy's with the bullies, and the second time when Jimmy's tearing up on the uh while Haley's getting information the uh, the phone calls with the Nintendo hotline or whatever hotline she used. So yeah, a very much a product of the time movie. A lot of kids doing a lot of unsupervised things, getting into hijinkery. So. In conclusion, once again I ask, is the wizard deserving of that 30-some percent on Rotten Tomatoes? Short answer, still yes. Long answer, as a long-time gamer, 33 I think is complimentary for probably 10-15 minutes of Nintendo in an hour and 40 long flick. Last inconsistency, that whole, uh, wanted to bring this up before I put the, put it to bed. Uh, Lucas said all 97 games. The Wizard came out in December 15th of 1989. Wikipedia, once again, to the rescue, you see this list here of 97 games. Yeah, all 97. I did. He's, he said all 97. I'm like, all right, all right. See how up on uh, what you call it you are. It doesn't even get to Mega Man 2. Like, you see the last game, RC Pro Am. That's March of 1988. There's still over, like, oh, I didn't list all of them. That's got to be at least 100 more or so games till I hit December of 89 when the movie came out. That's a whole other, like, that's March of 88. There's, like, a year and three-fourths of games. Though, to be fair, a 200-plus game collection would be mad hard to move around in that little, like, uh, package of it. Who would have had, like, one in each hand and, like, Hercules that shit? You know, one of those old, um... Did they, does those ever hold 100 NES games back in the day? NES games were bulky sons of bitches. I imagine 50, but you would have to... But I, I don't see Mega Man 2 on this list. That was in the movie. Uh, I don't see Ninja Turtles. That showed up twice. I think that was a little later, too. Yeah. All 97. Yeah, a lot of it, the early beginning, all the... A lot of just Nintendo Nintendo games. 
So that's my review of The Wizard. Stands out... Again, only because of its inconsistencies and how Super Mario Bros. 3 was shown off for the first time. Now, I don't know. I can look back on it. I was a little more critical of this movie, pointing out a lot of the mistakes it made. But, again, just probably far from the worst video game movie I can think of. Like, if you think top 10 worst video game movies, this would not enter that conversation, maybe, or it would be very low on the list. It would probably be, like, a honorable mention as, um... Uh, you know, as time rolls on, you know, you got your Uva Bowls and your, your, you know, your Street Fighter the movie, which I liked. A lot of inconsistencies in that as well. So that will do for uh, my review of The Wizard. Did you like the movie? Did you own a power glove and thought that was accurate at least? Or <laughs> Again, it looked like, like when he was controlling it, he was like uh, driving it. Did it work like that? Because I remember when the power glove came out, it was like... A weird ping pong ball game or something like that in the 3D in a way. I just remember the general the general feeling of the power glove it being not very good. I just feel they sh could have showed off like more like where's our first arcade stick of that like you know the NES Advantage you know your big big buttons with the stick and everything. I guess they I guess the power glove wasn't doing well in sales and they wanted to push that more. I don't know. I. Man, to be a fly on the wall of that decision, like... Again, Nintendo let a lot of stuff... A lot of inconsistencies fly. Were they just that desperate to get the product out there? Again, a product of its time, we ate it up. Nowadays, we look upon it and go like, hmm. I'm not even really, like, asking why. Like, I still think the movie is harmless enough. Like, it's not irredeemably bad. It's not, like... Fuck, I wasted so much time watching this movie. I, I, I didn't feel like I was bored watching it like I did. Well, it can run on a little bit. But, again, if, what, like, eight, nine-year-old me can sit through it multiple viewings just to get to the Nintendo stuff, then it's, I guess it can't be that bad. But, again, you had a good enough cast with the, the kid characters again I found Haley to be like charming then I, I still do I thought like oh she's the best part of this whole movie she's the driving force 90% of the movie is just like Haley winning the day like so yeah that will do for my review take care thanks for watching